Okay. okay. Uh, so now on to community health. Um, as some of you know, we do have a Pine Island pandemic task force. And at one point they asked for GPICA representation. And so at that time I volunteered to jump on uh, as the representative from GPICA. But uh, we have um, Jim Coatman here who uh, runs that organization now. And he's gonna give us an update on what's going on with the pandemic in our area. Okay, uh, uh, Sue, Sue, Sue is also on that committee. Uh, and so Sue, you, you can chime in. She, she's been one of our really right. stellar uh, uh, <laughs> taking action. Uh, uh, and unfortunately, she's a little bit hurt up now. So, but- uh, Just wanna make <laughs> one comment, Jim. Um, uh, Scott Wilkinson was, was has been an uh, active member of that group up until recently. So um, yeah. you did have GPICA rep representation for about a year. Yeah, and and Scott was no longer able to do that, so that's why we uh, invited Helen. I, yeah, I appreciate that. I I can't. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Scott. Uh, 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 well, so so this uh, Pine Island Pandemic Task Force was started by a, a, a group of nurses who were concerned about uh, 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 personal health protection uh, uh, and, and making face masks. And they had a uh, volunteer organization to make face masks, masks. And that's how the organization got started, was just thinking about how people in our community can help other people in our community uh, uh, face the, the, the pandemic. And uh, going on from there, you know, we, we, the task force has followed the course that the whole the pandemic has. You know, we started off with flattening the curve uh, uh, and uh, we did a lot of some publicity on that. Uh, and then uh, uh, we were uh, uh, concerned about the, the big spike, you know, that we had in Lee County uh, uh, last summer. And that started uh, uh, affecting us here, you know, a study from the uh, uh, University of Florida uh, has uh, supported the idea that the, the, the summer peak, uh, which was experienced in a lot of the country, but was especially strong here, uh, uh, was probably related to the air conditioning use, uh, increased air conditioning use, uh, why it was bigger in our community. So during that time, you know, we, we did a lot to encourage testing, uh, 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 social distancing, mask wearing, and, and, and just trying to, uh, uh, you know, uh, emphasize as apolitical, a, as being as apolitical as possible. Uh, uh, and so we, we've tried to uh, follow that rule. Uh, uh, later on now, uh, you know, more recently we're, we're much more involved in encouraging the vaccinations, helping the homebound to get vaccines, uh, addressing misconceptions about vaccines. Uh, and with regard to vaccines, uh, I, I put a, a little message in the chat uh, for those. Uh, uh, Daniel Hanley, who's you know uh, one of the new uh, the new GP, he's a a, a deaf uh, uh, person, uh, uh, and and if you talk to him, you don't think he's deaf. Uh, 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 but uh, uh, if you're wearing a mask, you think he's deaf because he, he's just an excellent uh, uh, um, lip reader. Uh, 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 and and he has, uh, so he has his, his practice right there at, at the center of town. And he has 60 Moderna and 100 J&J uh, &J vaccines. The J&J &J vaccines will uh, expire June 21st. And I, I put the phone number there, 833-742. 6276 uh, to, to get an appointment. Please let anybody uh, uh, that, that, you know, that needs vaccine know about that uh, being available. And Are they free? Uh, 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 he will make arrangements so that they're free. Uh, 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 he can get uh, you know, money through the uh, 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 insurance, but otherwise they're free, and and uh, it would take any patient. You don't have to be his patient. 
I, I, I think anybody. So, so right now, you know, one of the issues is, is uh, what's happening with regard to the variance. And, I, and I'd like to talk about that for just a few minutes. It's, it's not one of my areas of expertise. Uh, uh, and and, and to, to establish my expertise, I'll give a little bit about uh, my qualifications. Uh, I set up an, uh, in 1984 to 86, I set up a national epidemiology program in Mexico. And, and uh, when I came back from that, uh, I, I did that because I got tenure. And, and getting tenure, I thought it could change careers. So I became a mathematical modeler. Uh, and and uh, it started working on things like HIV and, and uh, 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 I've carried the motto of developing theory that serves public health since then. In 2003, I went to China uh, for the Beijing epidemic, the SARS coronavirus one epidemic in 2003 to investigate that epidemic. So, so uh, uh, and I'm currently working on models of escape mutation variants. Now, the reason I mentioned all of this is because the threat of these escape mutation variants is rising very quickly. Uh, 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 and it is, it is the major reason why we still have concern and why we should still be, be uh, 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 doing everything we can to, to stop transmission. You, you just take England uh, uh, as the example. Uh, uh, you know, England uh, uh, had their big epidemic, then they got things under relative, relative control. Then they had a new higher transmission agent take over. And that, that agent that took over England has now completely taken over the United States. But now England has been taken over again by the uh, a variant that arose in India, uh, uh, almost completely taken over. We have the agent here and, and that one is clearly more transmissible. And that one is clearly able to escape some parts of the immunity that the vaccines are given. The good news is that the, the these modern vaccines, especially the mRNA vaccines, can be modified very quickly and very effectively. And they're such safe vaccines uh, 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 compared to the old vaccines that, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, 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 we should be able to handle that kind of an issue. Uh, uh, but the threat is quickly rising. And, and how long uh, the epidemic will take to evolve less virulence, and some papers initially said, "Oh, two to ten years from now, this is just this this virus is just going to be like the uh, uh, the virus in the uh, that's causing the, the kids colds, you know." Uh, uh, and and uh, uh, unfortunately, that article uh, uh, that, that said that's going to happen, they didn't have the the model like we have about the variants and, and that's it's just not going to happen. Uh, 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 so it takes a very, a very high vaccination rate in order to stop these variants from taking over. And, and that's why we have to do everything possible to get that uh, 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 vaccination rate up. And if they do start to take over again, then it's really worthwhile do, uh, taking the action that are necessary, the social distancing uh, actions to get those things under control while we get the vaccines made specifically for those, uh, 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 and it should not take nearly as long the second time as it took the first time. And, 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 and so anyway, th those are a lot of the, the issues. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm open to a lot of questions. I, 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 I any questions you might have, I, I uh, spend a couple hours every day reading the literature on, on this uh, issue. I tend, but, but there are tens of thousands of articles that come out. I tend not to read the clinical things as much as I do the epidemiologic things. But if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Uh, Jim, did you want to share your screen? Did you have something to show people? Yeah, okay, let me do that. Uh, 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 can I um, share the statement he wrote, Helen? I'll put it in the chat for everyone. Jim, are, are you up for that? Yeah. Uh, 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 let me see. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Go, go ahead, Nadine. You can do that. Okay. Thank you. 
Okay, do, do you see this graph? Yes. On there now? Okay, well, this is, this is, this is uh, uh, you, you know, uh, uh, back here in, 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 in November, this was St. James City. This is both, uh, 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 this is the Mount okay. Lachey, and this was. Uh, uh, Mount Lachey. <laughs> yeah, I, know, I, know, I get this, I get this around. Yeah, this is Matt Lachey. This was Bokilia. And, and Bokilia is in the middle, I think. But yeah, Bokilia is this, this one right up at the top that goes. Yeah, Bokilia is in the middle. Yeah. All right. Bokilia is in the middle. This this one here is, is Matt Lachey. It says Matt Lachey, right? Yep. And and this is St. James City. So you can see that, you know, at one time the order was completely reversed as it is now. This is unfortunately three weeks uh, sort of out of date, but it, it, uh, um, it uh, because it takes a long time. This is from the, uh, the Jones, uh, uh, um, uh, um, what do you call it, uh, 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 dashboard. Uh, and you know that uh, she, she had a lot of, she was kicked out from, from running right. the, the county, the state uh, uh, dashboard, uh, uh, and and uh, this is very useful kind of thing. But it's a lot of work to create this for every city, every week. So it's a few weeks behind. But but there is good news, and 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 where we are, here's the uh, you know the, the the Lee County. Lee County is, is still one of the very high places. And a couple of weeks ago, I was really, really concerned. But now, in the last couple of weeks, it is get, getting down there again. Uh, however, the the uh, oops. Uh, well, uh, here we go. Uh, 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 you can see that the test positivity is now coming down a little bit. The deaths are still high. The state has done a very bad job of, of managing the, the, the recording of deaths and, and the state dashboard makes it look like deaths are always going down very quickly. And in fact, they have not gone down at all. They've been uh, steady. So, so um, things are looking better, uh, uh, but we've got to be really alerted to these, these deviants. Questions? Yeah, go ahead, Mike. Um, I just have a quick question. You hear now about uh, the suggestion that everybody gets some kind of a um, booster uh, vaccine in the next couple of months. Do you know anything about whether that's going to be happening or? No, they, they, uh, uh, they are preparing the, the booster vaccines. OK. They are preparing them on the basis of the uh, South African variant and the Brazilian variant. And unfortunately, the big problem now is the Indian variant. Indian and Vietnamese, right? Yes. Yeah. So, so, uh, uh, but the but the good news is that they can they can respond to these things quickly. Uh, you know, my my research is to uh, develop a system that uh, uh, can inform them uh, when you have these multiple problems, which one should you be using? Okay. And, Jim, you want to stop sharing your screen so we can see if anybody else has their hand up. <clears throat> okay, how do I stop sharing this? Up at the top. Okay. 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 Uh, <clears throat> Jim? Jim is Scott. Can you hear me? Go ahead, Scott. Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, wait. Oh, oh. there we go. We can hear um, you. I just wondered if you had any thoughts. I mean, it. I'm not sure it has any relation to where we are right now, but there is new credibility to this. This was an, this virus was escaped from a lab. I just wonder if you had any thoughts on that. Well, the the uh, uh, it's very clear that this was not a lab manipulated uh, 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 virus, but uh, uh, the possibility that uh, uh, a lab that was tasked with the guy with culturing 
uh, uh, because of the 2003 epidemic, you know, they, they, they wanted to be prepared for the next uh, uh, epidemic. And they, they were looking at all the animals to see if they could, could find one. And there's a possibility that somebody in, in doing that task got infected and then started the epidemic that way. That is uh, what's gaining increasing credibility. Hmm. Jeff? Yeah, just uh, Dr. Koopman, two quick questions. What's the status on the FDA approval? Because I read the article in the Pine Island um, newspaper and they talk about the FDA approval or delays or it's likely to come quickly, but we're still under an emergency authorization. And then, which I think still concerns people that it hasn't been approved yet. And secondly, there was some recent um, communication on a Nobel laureate, Luc Montagne, who talked about the antibody dependent enhancement, ADE. Can you speak to that? Because I don't understand that. Yeah, the, uh, uh, first of all, about the uh, 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 FDA approval, sure. you know, uh, uh, that has been always uh, about a three year process. And so the, the thing is to, to make it a quicker process, they, they, they put it on a schedule that it would be able to be approved, you know, about nine months from now uh, 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 on an accelerated approval thing. And other people are saying, well, maybe we get accelerated even more, so so it's going to come out more, more quickly. And and uh, Moderna has already, you know, put together a a proposal for for getting uh, uh, FDA approval. These these uh, 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 you know. Uh, uh, the, under, the idea about vaccine approvals has always been so much slower than uh, medical treatment approvals because vaccines are given to people who have no illness and, and therefore the, the uh, 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 and, and they're given to everybody. Therefore, a small uh, uh, problem could, could be a, uh, a more serious issue. But the, but the, the, the problem, however, is people getting infected and getting the, the virus, and, you know, we've heard about this long hauler syndrome. Well, it, it, it can really upset people's uh, immune systems. And, and so uh, uh, the, the vaccine can, can prevent those uh, uh, long-term complications. So balancing those two things, uh, it is expected that they'll get approval. Uh, on an accelerated basis, whether that accelerated basis is nine months from now or three months from now, you know, it's okay. it yet to be decided. And what about the antibody dependent enhancement aid as I read? Yeah, yeah, the, 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 that's, that's, you know, I've worked on uh, dengue quite a bit and that's a real problem with dengue. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm surprised that that is still talked about as a, as a, uh, uh, as a realistic issue. Uh, I, I think that that has been thoroughly examined and there's not much to support the idea that, that, uh, that there's an antibody, an ADA, ADE kind of uh, effect that would, could make uh, infection worse. Well, he's a lore, uh, Nobel laureate, so he has some yeah. substance behind him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we we also remember the Nobel laureate that, that that talked us so much about vitamin C for colds. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, it, it 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 doesn't uh, it 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 doesn't compute, and and there's not uh, support for that idea. Okay. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Thank you. Okay, thanks, Jim. I, I just want to make one comment. I, yeah. I think we're very fortunate on Pine Island to have oh, a world class God. epidemiologist advising us on COVID. Awesome. Thank, you. Thank you, Jim. Okay. Uh, well, we want to now talk about the uh, uh, attack or, or, oh, well, I guess maybe not quite yet. Nadine. 
uh, Nadine was going to be back in a minute, but she was going to talk about the fact that our website was compromised or, or or it looked like it might be compromised. And um, so she made some, there she is, she made some security adjustments to that, uh, which um, required uh, paying more per month than we had been. So go ahead, Nadine, and explain that. Sorry, um, Helen, thanks. Okay. Uh, so when I built the website, I am not a website developer. I can put content on them and update them, but I'm not the person to do behind the scenes work. And so the Civic Association really needed someone to do that for us. I have a colleague I work with for some of my clients and he agreed to host our website and handle all the security upgrades we need um, regularly. So, you know, we won't get hacked and we've also got the site backed up so that if there is a problem, we don't have to rebuild it from scratch. So that will also allow us um, once we get it set up to begin taking membership dues online. So instead of the big giant backlog we have at the meetings when we're in person of people trying to pay and register and all that kind of stuff, um, we'll have a place online where you can go ahead and pay. And as part of that and to help cover the costs, um, we decided that we were going to change our due structure later this fall. I think we decided October. Is that correct, Helen? Yes. Okay. That is correct. So in October, we're increasing our per person dues to fifteen dollars, and it's uh, and we're but we're going to give you a discount if you're a couple. So it's fifteen per person, but twenty five per couple, and you know that's two people in the same household. Um, and then we also created a structure where you can um, pay for a lifetime membership, uh, $300 per person or $500 per couple. You'll never have to renew again. So that's, um, again, won't go into effect until the fall. So that's what we're doing to, you know, make sure we're consistent and secure and we have a place to communicate with people. Okay, so that's October 1st, I believe that we said uh, it, this would take effect. So if anybody needs to um, to pay their dues, pay it now before the fee <laughs> change. And I, pr and I promise I'll process them. <laughs> okay, so go ahead. Uh, yeah, just quickly, um, could you comment on what the compromise was of the website? Um, basically, we were getting hacked constantly and consistently. And I was really concerned that they were actually going to break through and disable our website. Um, one of my clients had this happen to them a few years ago, and it was actually a terror network that was infiltrating them, and the FBI had to get involved. So I don't think any of us want to go there. Okay. Thank you. Hey, All right, Dean. Hey, Dean. Yeah. Do you have any idea who was uh, in responsible no, for it's, the attack? It's, just, it's any number of people. People just get on. You know, and they'll start attacking your site until they find an in. And once they find an in, you're you're kind of shut down. So it's not an individual like Joe down the street trying to hack our website, you know. Probably the same people who did the pipeline. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just have some thoughts. That's all. We all can right. talk off the record. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, any other questions for Nadine? All right. So um, finally, we want to say that uh, because of, you know, now we're getting reports of matted algae at Tropical Point and through the bottom of Mount Lachey Pass. Uh, so really our water issues are, are coming to the fore again. Um, some of us on the board are getting together and some off the board to write a proposal for a septic or septic slash sewer study for Pine Island. Um, it's a step. Maybe Noel can explain, um, to explain this a little bit better than I can, but it's a step toward getting in line for possible state funding. Um, there, you know, the, the septic tank problem all over Florida is a huge issue. So, you know, in, in our county, there's something like 77,000 uh, septic tanks. And so converting everybody to sewer just seems like a gigantic project. 
Um, but people uh, and areas will get in line and in order for us to get in line earlier, um, I think the idea is get this study done. Can you talk a little bit about it, Noel? Uh, yes, uh, we're gonna have our first meeting uh, on uh, Friday at 11 o'clock. And uh, Nadine is, uh, is hosting that meeting and she sent a, a link out. So anyone that wants to be involved with the committee, uh, let Nadine know. But essentially what we're gonna do is we, we need to uh, set up a testing schedule. We need to determine what areas that we're going to test, how often we're going to test. We're also looking at uh, trying to gather information. Uh, Sue's working on that and also Nadine. And we're putting together the information we have so that we know all of the facts that went into the uh, request that uh, Captiva Island made to the county for $100,000 in funding to do a sewer study. So essentially what we need to do is identify that we have a problem out here, which uh, we can certainly do. And then when we document that, then we can write a proposal to the county to where we get $100,000. And then the study would uh, determine what areas of the island that are eligible for a state funding for sewer. Plus uh, another factor is that Lee County Utilities, uh, just a, a few years ago, designated the entire island in their sewer service area. So we are in their service area. So we want them to serve us because they built the sewer plant um, in the beginning solely to serve Matmache. And uh, it was only an afterthought uh, when uh, I, I sued the county over this and they added uh, Cherry Estates and a few other businesses along Stringfellow. But other than that, there wasn't any uh, additional capacity in the plant to run the lines north to Boquilla as the original plan was outlined. And so that's one of the big things we're gonna be able to pick up from the sewer plant on our visit on the 14th is how much capacity do you have in the plant? How many additional homes can you serve? So if the capacity is there in the sewer plant, then we should be able to identify enough areas to where we could utilize the existing capacity without having to do any uh, large capital outlays to uh, build large uh, sewer processing facility. So all of these things, uh, uh, we're gonna start, the first meeting is gonna be Friday at 11. So uh, from there, we'll put a plan together and we're probably looking at the best time to do our testing is gonna be in uh, maybe August, September, October, when we get the most rainfall, because that's that way we're going to be getting positive readings in a lot of different places. Any questions? No, where is the meeting going to be, please? Zoom. Okay, Zoom. Thanks. No, no. Claudia, if you want to, if you want to attend, send me an email and I will um, send you the Zoom link. And I put in the chat that, um, that you guys could email info at gpica.org and put septic in the subject line and I'll send you the Zoom link if you want to participate. Thanks. It's really Maybe just a catch me. I already sent it in. Need to do. Sorry, catch me. Scott, what do you say? I'm sorry, Scott. I, I'd like to be on that call. Oh, um, absolutely. Yes, just, as, just like as you know, know. Um, with Flatwoods and the arsenic and all that, I've been in contact with LCU a few times who owns that wastewater treatment plant. And they've told me that that plant is at 50% capacity. And if you go down here, I don't know if, do you all know where, where the wastewater treatment plant is on Pine Island? Yes. It's huge. It's right across from Turtle Trail as you go down into St. James City. Turtle Trail from Boquilla is on the right. And there's a paved road with a chain link fence that goes to the left. And that's where the wastewater treatment plant is. And I encourage people to go down there and look because we are taking care of Mount Lachey's wastewater and very little of our own from Pine Island. And it's, it's it, we're kind of getting screwed, but there's no, I mean, we're not gonna shut off Mount Lachey, but they're only at 50% capacity, which is a waste. 
Okay, Scott. So earlier I, I did announce that we, we do have a tour set up for us for the, of the wastewater treatment plant on June 14th at 1 p.m. And um, there will be somebody there to answer our questions. Um, so it, if anybody wants to join us, you know, um, let us know. Jim. Yeah, I just wanted to respond to Noel about the, the nature of, you know, the testing and, and the nature of the problem that we have here. Uh, uh, you know, it's, it's not only the non-functioning uh, uh, septic tanks that are the problem here, even the functioning uh, septic tanks are a, a significant problem in terms of nutrient load, uh, 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 especially since Pine Island Sound, you know, is such a sensitive area. And, 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 and it's, the, the whole grasslands in, in, in Pine Island Sound need, need to be better cared for. And, and, and we know that, that uh, the nutrient load is increasing the red tide uh, production when the, when the red tide comes in. So, so these, are, these are major issues of, of, of water quality for which we would, should get outside support. Now we're not in the, the Southwest Florida Water Management District. You know, we're outside of the Southwest Florida Management District. So, so, so we have to have some special way of getting uh, 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 you know, organized for the input. Or, do you have any ideas on that? Well, uh, first of all, uh, uh, we are in the South Florida Water Management District. Uh, Southwest Florida Water Management District is uh, Charlotte County and all the counties on the West Coast North. And so we're in the South Florida Water Management District. And uh, yes, uh, they do have a category that includes uh, the waters of Pine Island Sound and the waters of Mount Lachey Pass. But what we're mainly going to be concerned with uh, I think at this stage is, is going to be the amount of E. coli in the water. Well, I, I think that's misdirected. Uh, 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 it, you know, we can manage our infection transmission problems uh, uh, with uh, uh, septic tanks, but we can't manage the nutrient uh, contamination with uh, septic tanks. Can I make a comment? Um, yeah, go ahead. Just a couple of things. One is the, the coliforms are now enterobacter is a better indicator because it's, it's human only. Um, uh, the old, old tests, people always blame the birds. And now we have a test that will only find human waste. So just FYI, it's a more specific test, more helpful for diagnosis of, of failed septic systems. The other comment I think was Dr. Copeman's alluding to is that most septic systems and sewage uh, systems, waste, waste treatment plants, do not, are not designed to get nutrients in the effluent to zero or to very low levels. They're primarily designed to get rid of the uh, bacteria that are harmful like the, um, the enteric bacteria. Yeah. So there, and I've asked this question of septic system people, you can design and you can retrofit a current uh, mm. uh, waste treatment plant to get nutrient nitrates and phosphates down to three ppms, which is probably okay for an estuary. Um, I know that's okay for our big saltwater fish tanks in our house. Um, and so it can be done technically, obviously it costs money. I don't think any plant in South Florida is designed that way right now, or, I, or maybe the one on Sanibel is. But that's something I think we need to ask. That was sort of my question about this a uh, plant that's going to go in, or this uh, uh, condo gr uh, group and a plant that's going to go in at the center. Um, if they design, because they're right on the water. I mean, they're right next to Little Pine Island. Right. Um, they should not be putting hundreds of ppms of nitrates and phosphates into the water, which is what they will do under normal design. That's right. So it can be done. We need to ask for it. It probably isn't all that terribly expensive. So that's just one thing we should we need to keep in mind when we're looking at a, what, what our options are. Well, I'd like to comment, uh, respond to Dr. Koopman's comment. Uh, I, I have a 30 year history here of dealing with water quality issues. Uh, being on the watershed council for many years where John Cassani and other hydraulists and I, and I work to try to affect some change here. And one of the things that we did have at one time, I'm not sure what the current status is, but there were 
three testing stations in Matlache Pass that were testing for nitrate, phosphorus, and dissolved oxygen, plus several other different chemical contaminants. And what we saw with, they took the barrier out in Cape Coral, the Cetus barrier, which we sued them over, Pine Island sued the state over that and the city. And uh, what happened was uh, the level of nitrogen in the water uh, just quadruple went off the charts. And now it's a National Aquatic Preserve, Mount Lachey Pass, and it was never uh, contaminated before, but now the nitrogen in there has made the whole pass to where it is uh, 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 totally contaminated with it and we cannot get anybody to do anything. So the nitrogen issue, there's more nitrogen coming from Lake Okeechobee releases from the sugarcane industry than are generated here in our watershed. The amount of nitrogen from the septic tanks is minuscule in terms of the total nitrogen that's coming down the river and being dumped into San Carlos Bay. So that is a much, much bigger issue, which the island here is, is not going to be able to solve that issue. And, that, and, and so I think what issue we can solve is the uh, human contamination that's occurring in the canals themselves. But, uh, you know, and it's just, it's too bad we can't, but uh, at the end of the day, the Florida DEP uh, said that Cape Coral was totally compliant when I was one of the people that met every week for like two and a half years and we were supposed to come up with a uh, echo management agreement an ema and the whole guidelines when we started that whole process was that if uh, uh you didn't have a consensus from the group to do these uh uh swales was was the city had these calculations that showed all of the nitrogen and phosphorus that are generated at Cape Coral with their septic tanks and their yard fertilizers were all uh, uh, taken care of by the swales and the ditches, which we all know was totally absurd. But at the end of the day, even though uh, every uh, uh, different group that was represented on that EMA voted not to accept those benefits instead of putting the barrier back, the barrier is not in that canal to this day because the state won't do, the state says all this stuff, but they won't clean the water up. And we've had a, a, the, a the ter current legislation has been in power for 30 years in Florida. And over the last 30 years, the water has gotten worse every single year. So now every water body in Lee County is impaired. It's impaired for either nitrogen, phosphorus, dissolved oxygen, or some other set parameter. And so the last time this occurred, the state, when everything was impaired, they changed the parameters. But now they're all back impaired once again. So I don't know how you deal with that. Okay, so this is a problem that um, it's going to take a long time to even discuss as well as solve. It's after eight o'clock, and I know that Sue uh, Dahod has something that she wanted to bring to the attention of members. Um, Jim, if you have a, a quick comment, uh, go ahead. But otherwise, uh, I think we're trying to wrap up our meeting. I, I, I just want to say that I, that I think that the issue of the uh, 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 how Pine Island is itself putting uh, uh, human nitrogen and phosphorus into, into the sound is more of a problem than uh, 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 Noel's making it sound like. Okay, so that discussion uh, maybe can continue over a, uh, a mug of beer or something like that. Come on over, Noel, we'll, we'll talk about it. Sounds like great. Okay, so Sue, go ahead. Uh, you had some well, clean water issues you wanted to bring up. Well, this is actually, Noel's comments are an excellent introduction. So for the past, probably forever, uh, Florida has allowed pollution and the legislatures have been pro-development, the leg legislators have been pro-development 
and we have gotten worse and worse and worse with our water quality. Um, I think there's an initiative uh, just started up that might be the path forward out of this morass. And that is um, a concept called rights of nature. Uh, there was a rights of nature uh, uh, initiative passed in Orange County in the last election. And what that does is it gives legal standing uh, to both humans and humans on behalf of ecosystems to have a right to clean water. And it gives legal standing when some organization or business pollutes the water to actually sue them and get, um, get changes in our water management systems. The, the, the reason that this is powerful is the, the process that, and there's a group, and I'll, I'll encourage you, I can put it in the chat, but it's called uh, Florida5, FL5.org. They just launched about a week ago. And what they're trying to do is they're actually, they're, there's five constitutional amendments for the Florida constitution. They wanna get on the 2022 ballot. And one of those is these rights of nature amendment. And, and the, the benefit of it, of it is it gives legal standing to people to have clean water, which we don't have now. Nobody in the country without a rights of nature uh, initiative has a right to clean water. Uh, we have, uh, it, the system doesn't, doesn't work that way. So that's number one. Number two, this whole initiative totally bypasses our, um, our political uh, system, goes straight to the people. This is a, a ballot initiative, it needs 60% to get on the ballot, and, or it, it needs a, about a million signatures on petitions to get on the ballot. But once it's on the ballot, 60% uh, positive vote uh, means that Florida will have a, a, a rights of nature amendment that protects people's right to clean water and it also protects animals' right to clean water. So I think, I think this is a, a big deal. Uh, I think, and I'm fully supporting it. I'm, um, I'm going to be working to get petition signed. Um, it's fl5.org. You can, you can download a petition, sign it, send it back. Um, and and I, I, I think we'll probably hear more in this organization about it. Um, Carl Deigert, who um, has uh, been in Matt Lachey for a number of years, is the South uh, West Florida director. And there are six districts in Florida that are united in trying to get this thing passed statewide. Sue, have you explored the legal ramifications and how this will not fly? Uh, I think Pennsylvania and New York have dealt with this and they have um, taken a different route. And uh, I'm just saying, it sounds- I, I, I know that, well, I, I do know that Florida has already preempted it. They preempted certain parts of this, and or Orlando Orlando went around those preemptions and got it passed. Um, I know Pittsburgh has prevented fracking throughout the region where the Rights of Nature um, uh, ordinance passed, and they have successfully prevented fracking in in all the greater Pittsburgh area inside of the zone of, of the ordinance. It was I know in Ohio it was it was repealed by the state legislature. Um, and so there will be an unbelievable amount of pushback in Florida. This goes I'm just saying totally it, will not, it won't pass in the, it, it will get stopped in the courts because of the Burt Harris law, that property is owned by people. It does not have a life of its own. I'm just saying. Well, I don't think that happened right in paper. Orlando. So we, we, can, we can talk about the legal issues. There are a lot of lawyers involved in this. And, and, and I, I don't think we can preemptively say it will be struck down. I think we need to um, look at how it's been successful. Uh, there's there's certain countries that have put this in place. Um, it's a it's an uphill battle in terms of there's a lot of infrastructure and political might and a lot of money that does not want this to pass. Um, and so there will be lots of people fighting it, but it it is a way to bypass the special interests and the political hacks and put this in front of the people. And I agree with you that, that there are gonna be, there is gonna be pushback. I don't know how Orlando got it because they're part of Bert Harris as well. Yeah, okay. So this is, these issues are so important. And so, so it's, it's heartening that people are arguing about this because that means that there's energy behind this. 
So, um, so there is also going to be a bridge protest, right? Or a, a demonstration? Yeah. So there's there's on on um, July third. There's going there there are a series of bridge protests that are being organized. The first one was um, organized for the uh, Port Myers Beach Bridge, um, Matanus Pass Bridge. Uh, we got together, and I have one that we're um, organizing for the Matt Lachey Bridge. Nine o'clock on the third of July. Um, it's being uh, advertised on Facebook. We'll try to get the word out. We're working on getting other bridges in the region. I haven't gotten more than those two yet, but we're working well, on it. So, well, be be careful, Sue, because with the new state law that just passed, if there's three or more of you <laughs> that gathers, you could be charged with a felony. <laughs> we're not going to do anything that's going to get us charged with a felony. We're we're willing to take the risk. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, this has been a, a productive meeting, even though um, our major uh, speakers uh, didn't show. So thank you for coming. Um, I would request that one of the board members come up with a motion to adjourn. Uh, I make a motion to adjourn. Thank you, Nadine. Second? I second that. Thank you, Mike. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Just raise your hand. Okay, any opposed? All right, all right, thank you and- Thank you for hosting, Helen. Thank you everyone. You're very welcome. Thanks, Helen. All right.